so what you're saying to me that there was a sort of a fundamental agreement on, on, on the fact that Saddam had to be dealt with, that's fine. But, I mean, there were differences in terms of emphasis because, you know, they were saying yeah. regime change. Well, I'm giving you one at the, at the press conference. I know, the I know but the point, is, stands up and says, but the point the really is, did you and your colleagues explore with the American counterparts what the differences were and what the implications of these would be downstream? Yes, yes. That, in fact, that was a very important part of that discussion both in the margins and within the discussion. I can remember when there was the broader discussion. Initially, I think it was the Prime Minister, the President, the Vice President, David Manning, Condi Rice, and that was where I think the Prime Minister persuaded, uh, or at least got kind of tacit approval for the President from the Vice President to go down that route. In the broader discussion, for example, George Bush was, was if you like, picking our brains about this whole anti-Americanism. Uh, and what our analysis was as to where it came from, how much it mattered, how real it was. So they were, they were conscious, I think, of, of different strands of, of public opinion. And I think it's, to go back to the point about there being these kind of three different bits of the government, that probably overstates it, but, you know, the White House, the State Department, the Pentagon, all different places. But I think that the, certainly the people that I was dealing with and watching the Prime Minister's discussion with President Bush, they got some of the broader political and um, uh, uh, issues attached to this. But still I'm getting a picture that there was sort of a lot of common ground and that you did not explore in some depth where the differences of emphasis lay and what that would mean in the longer term. But in a sense, the, this, this, was, this was an issue that was being played out in the public domain uh, all the time. So there was the 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 difference in emphasis emphasis was was evident for all to see. Um, but I, and, and for example, later on in the process, I can remember when we, we got onto the whole business of getting fourteen forty one, and then later the the pursuit of the of the second resolution. That uh, George Bush was pretty clear that this the, 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 there in terms of the pursuit of the second resolution, it was very much for the UK interest. Um, well, 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 so, so the, 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 I think the difference of emphasis was, was pretty clear. Okay. Can I just also ask you about, at Camp David meeting, did you understand that the Prime Minister and the President uh, are being discussed what would happen after military action, if, 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 if there would be one? The, um, yes. And in, in, in fact, I, I, I saw going through my, um, my notes uh, before Crawford at that meeting that I mentioned, I think it was at Chequers, with Mike Boyce and some of the other military, uh, at that discussion as well, there was the, 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 they were already talking about aftermath. Um, they being they being us, the British, and certainly uh, in the discussions that, that uh, I saw the Prime Minister have with President Bush, it was it was always on the on the agenda. But mentioning it, but, but was there proper planning in terms of what 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 that would involve? Well, as to what when, as to when actual. I mean, don't forget, at that time, you are a long way off uh, military action, and, and, and the genuine, genuine attempt uh, that the Prime Minister is leading on behalf of the British government is to make sure that this thing is resolved peacefully. So I, I don't know when. You'd, you'd have to ask people who are more directly involved in the, in the planning than I was, when, as it were, specific, detailed aftermath planning began, I don't know. But certainly everybody was conscious the whole way through this that there would come a point, if, the, if it came to military action, there would come a point where you're into post-conflict Iraq and big questions uh, arose from that. And I think people were starting to think about those questions. Um, I couldn't say when the planning started, but people were always conscious but of But my that understanding is about. that the American view was that it would be all right on the day. Well, I certainly, I mean, I, I read David Manning's transcript to, to the inquiry, and, and I think there was a feeling on the, what he described as the neocon um, wing, if you like, that there was that sense that that's correct, but I think there were others uh, who didn't necessarily share that. So I think we did have a sense that there was an awful lot of planning going on, and um, uh, by whom, though, within the American administration, and also well, the um, aftermath. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, can I come back to the question of the multiple reasons for wanting to take action against Saddam? Uh, why did the UK focus its case on WMD? 
exactly. Yeah. There's, there's never in, in all of these questions. There's no. There's never just one single thing. If you read the prime minister's, uh, I mean, I went back in the last few weeks when I um, knew that when I was going to be at the inquiry, and I, and I reread all all of Prime Minister Tony Blair's speeches on Iraq going way back, and there's a whole there's a whole panoply of arguments that are that are put there. Why did the issue of WMD become so central because that was what gave, ri gave rise to the, to the fear and the, the sense of a serious and credible threat to regional stability and also, as I mentioned in relation to September the 11th, this, the, the Prime Minister was absolutely seized and I think still is seized of the view that unless the world is absolutely totally vigilant on this issue of WMD then there, it's only a matter of time before actually the, the, something really terrible happens in relation to the, 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 them linking in with with the terrorist groups. So that's that's his mindset and people can disagree with it or not but that is where he was coming from. So WMD was the, it was the regime part of it, of course. Did the, would, would, would somebody like Tony Blair, from the day he went into politics, think that somebody like Saddam Hussein should be got rid of? Yes, he would. Was that the policy that he was pursuing the whole way through? No. He was trying to, through the UN, lead the British government in the direction of pursuing a policy that would lead ultimately to the disarmament of, of Saddam Hussein. When it came to it, when the diplomatic process clearly uh, was, was, was uh, not going to resolve the issue post-1441, and when the, when the French pulled the plug, then military action became the only means responsible. But you said earlier that there was common ground, and of course this is something that Blair and Bush shared, but we put emphasis on WMD. Was it because the Attorney General believed that the grounds for military action, such as regime change, self-defence, in, 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 intervention, could not form a legal basis of military action? No, I don't think so. And, and again, I know that the Attorney General uh, will be here as well, so he can he can um, uh, answer about the legal the, the legal questions. But that was not the the argument. No, the, the, look, people can disagree with it or not. But the, Tony Blair held a fundamental view about this, about this being a real threat, the context for which was completely changed by, by September the 11th. And interestingly, I, again, when I was uh, preparing for this, um, I was reminded of, uh, the, on the September the 10th, 2001, we went to a lunch at The Guardian, and Mike White, the, political, the then political editor, uh, reminded me post-September the 11th, that at that lunch on September the 10th, Tony Blair had said the really big issue coming down the track is WMD slash rogue states slash terrorist organisations. The next day, he had that view pretty firmly established, uh, cemented. And from that moment, as he said, I think, when he gave evidence to the, to the Butler report, it was the context uh, that changed then, that containment, which in any event was becoming... Um, less successful, uh, people were feeling was, was, was more difficult to pursue, not necessarily having the effects that people wanted for it, that the, the tolerance level, if you like, of allowing Saddam to carry on defying the United Nations resolutions that in which, uh, which he was in defiance, that, the, that that is what changed and the context changed. Now that is a real security issue and his judgment as the Prime Minister, ultimately, that is why he's there and I'm not, and other people aren't, he's got to make those big strategic judgments based upon what he knows, and it was a genuinely held strategic judgment about British security interests. I understand that, but the thing is, he may, so he privately, it seems to me, had a, had a strong conviction about regime change, but publicly there was a, a, a policy to actually focus he on a, WMD. A, no, he had an absolutely fundamental view about disarmament, and look, as David Manning reminded you, even George Bush, and I can remember in a separate discussion, Condi Rice, accepted that if Saddam Hussein did comply with the United Nations obligations, if Hans Blix had been able to say, yes, I've been there, I've seen the lot, I've seen where all the leftovers are, I've been through right through the clusters document, we've got all the paper, we've seen all the evidence, he's got rid of a lot of it, Saddam Hussein, that would have been regime change and that it would have been a different sort of regime. Now, so I don't accept, you, see, you, you seem to be wanting me to say that Tony Blair signed up to saying, look, well, regardless of the facts, regardless of WMD, we're just going to get rid of the guy. It was not like that. 